All right, so today what I'm gonna do is I am going to show you how to solve a problem uh, in one dimension but involving acceleration. Okay, so this is, this is one dimension. So that just means that we're either going just right and left or basically up and down or any direction really as long as it's only in one dimension. All right, and so this one here is an example of what we call non-uniform motion. And so non-uniform motion means that we have a changing velocity. All right, so the first thing I always like to do with any of these questions is to draw a diagram. Okay, so we have our object here, it's thrown vertically upward and with a velocity of eight meters per second. So we have 8.0 meters per second. It's then going to come downward and hit the ground at some point here. All right, and so what I'm asked for here is what is the maximum height? That's what I'm asked for. So the first thing after we draw our diagram is we basically write down all of our knowns. So we know that this has a velocity initial, which is equal to 8.0 meters per second. And we're gonna say that that's a positive 8.0 meters per second, because we're gonna say that upward is positive. All right, and so we know our initial velocity, um, and we also know something about our final velocity as well. And so our final velocity well, because it goes up and it stops at the top before it comes back down, my final velocity is zero meters per second. And so I know my initial velocity and I know my final velocity. And so from there, I'm gonna figure out what equation I might need to use to figure out the height. So the height is basically displacement. Now I should be including vector arrows here. So displacement is question mark, like that. Um, we also know acceleration because it's gravity. We're going against gravity in the y, so acceleration will be opposite direction. Acceleration is going downward, so we should make it a negative value, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And so there we have it. There's all our knowns and our unknowns. So now we basically have to figure out what the maximum height is here. All right, so we go to our formula sheet and we gotta basically pick the, the correct formula here. And so I'm gonna look at maybe this formula here. So let's see, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now if I look at this formula, I see that I have uh, VF, okay, I know VI, and I know my A, but I do not know D. So that's a good formula to choose because I know three of the variables, but don't know one. So if you're gonna pick a formula, always pick a formula where you only do not know one variable. And here, the variable that we don't know is D, and we know all the rest of the three. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rearrange my equation. And so I rearrange, and I'm gonna rearrange it for D. So first thing I need to do is minus VI squared minus VI squared. You may want to practice rearranging equations, very important squared equals 2AD and then I'm going to divide by 2A and that's going to be left with D so divide by 2A so I have D is equal to VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A I'm then going to substitute my variables into there And so I know my VF is zero meters per second, so I have zero squared minus VI, which is eight meters per second. So eight squared divided by two A, so two times negative 9.81, or 9.8 meters per second squared, equals the D, which is displacement. Okay, so I go ahead and I type that in my calculator, and I'm going to do that right now. So let's see, 64 divided by, and I get 3.265, so 3.265. Now, if I scroll back up, I know that I should only put 
two significant digits because eight meters per second is two significant digits. And so <clears throat> I'm going to round it to two significant digits, so 3.3 meters. And my displacement basically is up equals D there. Beautiful. OK, so that's the answer for part one. My displacement at the maximum, which would be my maximum height, is going to be 3.3 meters up. All right. And so now part B says, how long does it take to reach the ground? So I guess maybe I'll switch colors for part for part B. I like blue. So part B, we are going to figure out how long it takes to reach the ground. So that's time, right? And so time is question mark. We also know the displacement. And we know the displacement now from the first part of the question. We know that the displacement is going to be 3.3 meters. Because that's the distance basically from the bottom here to the top is 3.3 meters. And so now I'm only really concerned with going from the top down to the bottom. How long is that going to take? Because the time that it takes to go from the top to the bottom will be the same as the time that it takes to go from the bottom to the top. And so if you were to get either one, that would be fine. But I'm just going to get the one or the time going from the top going to the bottom here. And so my displacement is now going to be negative. And it's going to be negative because I'm going down. I'm going down because I'm going to get the top or the time from the top going down to the bottom. So I chose my displacement to be negative. All right, my velocity initial now, because we're dealing with me at the top of our, um, of our rock here at the top. So our velocity initial is zero because we're at a maximum height. So velocity initial is zero meters per second. Velocity final, well, we don't really know the velocity final because we don't really know what the velocity final is going to be at the bottom. But we do know my acceleration, again, is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And so now, again, just like I did in the first part of the question, I can go to my formula sheet to figure this out. And so I go to my formula sheet, and I look at all the formulas that I have, and I'm trying to pick one formula that includes the time term, distance, velocity initial, and acceleration. So I'm looking right now, and let's see if I can figure this out. So. Um, let's try one like this. So let's see if we got VF minus VI over T is equal to A. So that's one good formula, but the problem with that one is we don't really know our velocity final. We don't know velocity final, and we do not know <clears throat> our time. So that's not going to help us yet. But if I found my velocity final first, then I could probably use this formula. So let's give that a shot. So um, let's try here. So we'll go VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. And so VF will equal VI squared. So my velocity initial is 0. So 0 squared plus 2 times A, which is negative 9.81 times D. And so D is going to be my displacement, which is negative 3.3 meters. And so I type that in, and miraculously, I actually get 8.0 meters per second. And I get that because, well, my velocity final at the bottom of my rock here, my rock's going down, will be the exact same as it was when it was going up. OK, and so I know my velocity final. And so now I can basically use this formula here to solve for time. And so once I rearrange, I get VF minus VI over T is equal to A. And we're a little bit squished here, but I'm going to use this. Oh, I forgot to rearrange there. Let me fix that. OK, so let's, uh, let's rearrange the equation. So it's, I'll move it up here. So V F minus VI over A is equal to T. Again, if you're unsure how to rearrange an equation, make sure you check out our video on rearranging equations or do some practice questions. OK, so VF, so we get negative 8.0 meters per second minus VI. So VI is 0 meters per second 
all over a, which is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And so I take that in and I get 0 0.816. So 0 0.816. And we're going to get seconds. So that's my time. Now, that was only the time going on the way down. So I have the times it by 2 to get my time up and down. And my final answer is 1.6 seconds. So that would be my final answer. And that's how you solve a one-dimensional question involving acceleration.